So we're gonna do um, some work on the shoulders today. Um, and you know, full disclosure, there's so many of the things that I'm going to try to teach you that I have a really difficult time doing in my body. So um, it might be one of those do as I say, not as I do kind of, kind of days. Um, but if you struggle with shoulder issues, you know, I am a swimmer, have been a swimmer my whole life. I do body work for a living. I obviously have a lot of strain that comes upon my shoulders and I'm not the only one. Um, anyone who, uh, even if you just sit and do a lot of work on a computer, um, you can end up getting a lot of frozen vibes in your shoulders and we can get stuck in this, this forward rotation um, that can really limit our range of motion in, in both uh, the external and the internal um, when we just kind of don't don't e either overuse our shoulders or don't use our shoulders at all and get very stuck in a pattern such as sitting in front of a computer. So <clears throat> today's practice is going to be some uh, you know more specific shoulder stretching more than um, some of the work that we've done like last week we did a practice um, that was a, a very much about strengthening the back of the body and the shoulders. Today's going to be a little bit more about trying to open things up. So um, if something it doesn't work for you or if you're uh, struggling, there's always ways to modify every single thing um, that you do. Um, so if you are struggling with a rotator cuff issue or something like that, just um, know that you can ask me if you can't figure out how to modify whatever we're doing. Uh, okay, so go ahead and sit up straight and tall and think about the term um, carrying the weight of the world on her shoulders or his shoulders or their shoulders. Um, you know, a lot of times we, we really can be burdened um, by the energy that lives in this part of our body. And we can also be bolstered that we can carry heavy loads physically and emotionally. Um, so our job is to um, build our resiliency up as best as we can. And part of that means having recovery practices today, which today will feel a little bit more in, in that arena a bit. So, as you sit up straight and tall and find a good healthy posture, let's pay attention to where your shoulders are sitting. Can you feel your shoulder blades? Um, kind of put your mind's eye deep into your body and feel the triangular shaped bones. Okay. And that bottom of the triangle, the, the bottom tip of your shoulder blades, Let's, instead of pulling them down, which often just makes us push our chest forward, let's imagine that there's some weights hanging off of them. And they're the type of weights that slowly come on so that it's just a steady and slow feeling of uh, letting your shoulder blades settle down the back a bit. And from this place, see if you can feel buoyant in the front of your sternum, your collarbones. Have that combination of your heart space um, being free and open, but not to the point where you're pushing. So, you know, have that balance where there's ease and resting uh, in combination with the openness. Allow your shoulders to drop now from the top of the shoulders instead of just from the shoulder blade tips. See if you can melt through the muscles in your neck, feeling a sense of surrender as the shoulders drop down from the top, feeling a lot of space between your ears and your shoulders. And then have just the teeniest bit of head bobble so you can make sure those muscles are relaxed. Imagine your collarbones right where your sternum and collarbones meet, kind of find that joint, soften it, and then wisp out your shoulder blades like feathers out toward your shoulder blades or toward your shoulders. And now lose the rigidity of any of this action and come into the open breath.
Maybe if you can feel into a soft, relaxed face, the base of your skull melting. Drop your awareness and energy down into your belly, your diaphragm, your pelvis. Let your legs surrender. Get that heavy grounded feeling. And then place your hands together at your heart. And let's offer an intention. Relax your hands. And let's find our way onto our mat. Okay, so as you as you stretch out and lengthen your body, enjoy, you know, being horizontal on the ground. Also, make sure you have a strap handy. So if we need to get up and go get a strap, we're gonna need that in our practice today. Okay. All right, so once you're settled on the ground, reach your arms overhead. Feel the length of one side, the length of another side. And then instead of your arms just being shoulder width apart, let's interlace your fingers and stretch your index fingers and your thumbs straight over your head. The other fingers are interlaced and feel the extension of lifting your ribs away from your pelvis. And let's keep that hand placement. Walk your legs over to the left and inch your torso over to the left and stretch again. Feel that right side of your body opening. Again, if anything starts to be straining on your shoulders or any other part of your body, you're gonna back off or make a change. And then come back to center, switch your fingers, switch the clasp of your fingers, stretch your arms overhead, and then let's move right. So some ways to think about um, modifying. I mean, obviously it depends on what we're doing. But generally speaking, changing the vector of movement of your shoulder joint. So if you're lifting your arm overhead and you always lift it from out to the side, you can try lifting it from the front or bending your elbow or crossing your arm in front of you to lift it over your head. There's lots of ways to just choose a different vector of movement to help your shoulder find its movement pattern that's most comfortable. Head back to center and go ahead and rest your arms down at your sides, palms facing up. See if you can melt the heads of the arm bones like you have sandbags on the heads of your shoulders dropping down into the ground. Now just a little bit of an assessment of your shoulders. So let's come to cactus our arms. So the elbows kind of are straight out from the shoulders and our elbows are bent at 90 degrees. Move the backs of your hands toward or into the ground. That for some people, there's tension here, tightness here that doesn't allow one or, or both uh, hands to settle the floor. You might get your knuckles down or not, you know, not even, or maybe you're very open and your wrists come all the way down comfortably. So just pay attention to what your natural range of motion is there in external rotation. And now we're going to um, bend our elbows so our palms are pointing straight up toward the sky, and then we're going to lower our palms down toward the ground into internal rotation. So instead of having our arms up toward our head, we're going to bring our hands down toward our hips, still at right angles. Now this is an unnatural movement to some extent, so you might feel that your shoulders just lifted off the ground a little bit. Maybe your hands touch the ground, maybe they don't, but wherever you land, See if you can get to a place of comfort where you can find ease and drop into this movement. All right, and then come back up. And this time we'll stretch our arms overhead. And here, experiment with these different vectors of movement. So let's try three different ways. You can bring your arms down at your sides and swing them out to the sides in a big arc overhead and feel your shoulders, how that feels. Now bring them down. You can have your hands directly in front of your pelvis. So you're lifting your arms overhead, hands shoulder width apart. 
and see how that vector of movement is to get your arms overhead. And now notice if that bothered you, cross your hands um, in front of your pelvis. So one is over the other and kind of swing your arms up in, um, you know, where you're passing past the midline and then you open your arms up. And just notice which of those three patterns were most comfortable. And there's more patterns than that. You can take your palms together. Here's a fourth. You can take your palms together like, um, you know, prayer heart, prayer hands, and lift your hands, keeping your elbows close together as you lift your arms overhead. So there's lots of different ways to change the shape of your shoulder joint when you're trying to get your arms overhead. So remember those for any practice, but especially for today. Okay, let's take our right knee into our chest, and actually take both knees into your chest. Rock around a little bit. Let your shoulders uh, step away from your center of focus and instead move into the low back. All right, let's roll through your knees here, feeling that sense of mobility in your low back, easiness in your hips. Move into the breath. And then change directions, going the other way, rolling the other way. Go ahead and bring your knees out to the mid to pass them away from the midline and then back in. So just feeling a little bit of range here in our hip joints. Enjoy this. Okay, right knee into your chest, left leg long on the ground, and feel into your feet. Feel a good squeeze in your knee and hip, and then open up, wiggle your toes, stretch your feet, invert, knee vert, point and flex, whatever feels good. And change sides, left knee in, right leg long on the ground, and feel into the movement of your feet again. Breathing well. Head is heavy, relax your shoulders. And then release to a start. Choose that pattern of lifting your arms overhead. Open up, spread eagle, finding that sense of space. And then exhale and draw your knees into your chest. Head comes up. Let's try it one more time. Choose a vector of movement for your shoulders. Exhale, knees into your chest. Relax your head back down. Put your feet on the ground. Let's just windshield wipe our knees, kind of opening up our hips and our spine a little bit more. Take your feet hip width apart, lift your hips, scoot them over to the right, knees come up, drop them left, and let's open up the spine and open up the chest. So um, just feel it. We're going to go a little deeper into a twist in just a moment. But first, just feel where is your pec feeling tight? Where is it feeling open? How about your spine? Does your thoracic spine move well in this direction? Do you have a little resistance anywhere? How's your breathing? Okay, come back up. Scoot your hips over to the other side. Knees come up. Drop to the right. Open up your left shoulder. Feel the twist here. Breathe into the rib cage. Let your head be heavy. Okay, bring your knees back up. Now we're going to roll all the way to our left side and um, bend everything at right angles. Palms are together. We're gonna open up into a twist so you can spread your chest open and let your hand rest on the ground. And then exhale and close that back up. So just kind of moving into that thoracic opening. And then find your way back over to the other side. 
lying on your right. Palms are together, knees are together, ankles are together. Inhale, open your palm up, reach that arm all the way back behind you, turn your head with it. And on your exhale, bring it back to center. So just kind of warming up the thoracic spine, which obviously has a lot to do with how you are mobile in your shoulders. So think of, you have so many joints that impact your shoulder movements, um, some of which are your vertebral joints in your thoracic and cervical spine. But you also have two different joints in your shoulder. You have your where your collarbone meets your shoulder blade. That's called your AC joint, your chromium cubicular joint. And then you also have your where your arm bone, your humerus bone, connects to your shoulder blade. And that's called your glenohumeral joint. So your shoulder actually has two joints. And then I would encourage you to think of some more joints as being a part of the shoulder situation. Okay, come onto your back, spread your limbs one more time. Even though your shoulder blade and where it glides and slides onto the ribs is not really a, a traditional joint, go ahead and bring your knees to your chest and then roll over onto your side and come on up. Try to think of that, your scapular, um, where your ribs and your scapula kind of slide on each other. Think of that as a joint space. Remember that you also have a joint where your clavicles, your collarbones meet your sternum. And then you also have where your ribs meet your sternum and where your ribs meet your spine. So there's, or your vertebrae. So there's a lot of articulating parts that can contribute to the way our shoulders move. Okay, let's um, move in through some cat cows. So as we move into cat cows now, let's see if we can explore all of those joints. Let's start with where the vertebrae, um, one joint to the next. So feel the movement of your cervical and thoracic and lumbar spine as you move from cat to cow and cow to cat. And then bring your awareness to where your ribs and your vertebrae meet. And maybe where your ribs and your sternum meet. So just find that hoop, the, the wrapping of the ribs from the front to the back and where they articulate. And now let's find the slide and glide of your shoulder blades as you round the back, that protraction of the shoulder blades where they spread apart. And then as you arch your back, the retraction of your shoulder blades as they move toward your spine. So just feel that slide and glide of the shoulder blades. And then let's feel into the collarbones. Can you feel where your sternum and your collarbones meet? Can you feel where your shoulder blades and your collarbones meet? And if you, you know, are unfamiliar, you know, your, your AC joints right in the front of your shoulder. And then lastly, let's feel into how the humeral heads kind of move within the socket. It's not, you know, the, the, the scapula forms like a little hood um, for your, uh, the ball of your humerus bone to kind of settle in. So notice how much there is to feel, okay? All right, let's uh, drop back towards child's pose, walk the hands forward. Now notice here, same thing as when we were lifting your arms overhead when we were on our back. Maybe you want to cross your hands right on top of each other. Put one hand on top. Maybe your hands are more comfortable shoulder width apart. Maybe they're comfortable wider. Maybe they're more comfortable cactus. Maybe really you just need a break and you need to put your arms down at your sides. So explore where your shoulders are comfy. If your arms are overhead, Let's walk them over to one side and feel your rib cage open. Anchor the finger pads so that you have a place to stretch from and feel the reach of your wrist, your arm, your armpit, your rib cage, your side waist down to your sit bone. Find your way over to the other side, feeling that reach and lengthen from the hand to hip.
and you come back to center. Bring your knees closer together and put your arms down at your sides. And just place your palms facing up and let your humerus bones, your arm bones, soften toward the floor. Let that natural spreading of the shoulder blades apart happen. We're going to come up onto our shins, arms coming up, reaching to the sky. Now we're we'll doing this a few times, so maybe your arms didn't like mine and they went out to the sides. Let's try some different vectors of movement. Up onto your shins, maybe the arms come in front. This time, prayer hands, palms to your heart, arms up. And this last pass, let's cross our arms and lift them up that way. So what felt most comfortable for your body? Back on tall fours. Wiggle around your spine. Feel free to roll in your hips. Move in whatever way feels good. And let's get some rib cage mobility here. So if you haven't done this yet in your own patterning, Let's draw the rib cage down over to the side and up over to the other side and down. Just feeling that fullness of your rib cage mobility. And then take a couple of passes in the different direction. Make sure you're breathing. Now, when the, the twist that we do just about every class, a lot of times I say, bring your arm up in the air. And for most of us, we go like this. We bring our arm out to the side. But if you've discovered that that's hard for your shoulder, maybe arm up in front of you to come up in the air is better. So experiment and then find your way into the twist. Let your shoulders relax, gaze downward, breathe your breath into your rib cage, into the, all those little joints that we've been trying to discover. The rib cage spine joints, the rib cage sternum joints. What are your collarbones feeling like? How are your shoulders, blades moving when you breathe? And now we're gonna come out of it a little bit. So face the ground with your chest, drop your hips back towards child's pose. And a different vector of movement for your um, shoulder here. I didn't say which side, so I'm not gonna say which shoulder, but the one that's underneath you. You can have your arm straight across, like perpendicular to your mat. That might feel like a good stretch for your outer shoulder, but perhaps maybe you need to bring your hand a little higher um, up toward your other hand. Okay, so experiment with vectors of movement here to open up the outside of the shoulder in a very safe, happy way. All right, and then go ahead, come back up, choose your vector of movement, arm lifting to the sky, hand comes down. Change sides, choose your vector of movement, arm up, exhale and slide that shoulder underneath. Enjoy the mobility of your breath, moving your ribs and all the joints that articulate around your ribs and your shoulders. See what moves on your in-breath, what moves on your out-breath. Okay, now to come out of the pose, we're gonna come a little bit, um, you know, squaring our chest toward the floor, our hips back towards child's pose, and choose where you want that arm underneath you to be. Straight across your mat, a little bit on an angle, to see what feels best on your shoulder. And then come out of there again, choose the vector of movement, arm up, hand down onto the ground. All right, sit back onto your heels. Let's shrug your shoulders and just do a few rounds of movements, of shoulder rolls. Go a couple times each direction, so rolling forward and rolling back. 
place your hands onto your mat and come to dog pose. Now let's get the rest of our body enjoying some of our practice and not, you know, let our shoulders have the corner on the market. Pedal your feet, open up your legs, breathing well. Root into the hands well. So once you get still in this posture, focus on your hands for a moment. Feel the four corners of your hands so we're not leaning heavily into the outer wrists. Drop weight into the index finger mound and the thumb mound. From that place, hug your hands toward each other and feel your side bodies turn on, your lats and your serratus turning on. These are support systems for your shoulders so we're not relying on the shoulder joint to hold us. Push off the ground now and lengthen through your shoulders. Extend heart toward the pelvis. All right, walk your feet forward, come to Uttanasana. Shimmy your hips, shake, do whatever feels good. Inhale for a halfway lift. Spine is spacious, round into the four corners of your feet, and then melt and fold again. One more time, a halfway lift. Feel the legs open. Exhale, close on up. Climb to the sky. Again, the vector of movement is your choice. For some of us, we go out, but for some of us, we go forward. Just see what feels good. Lift your arms up, open up your chest, lengthen through your spine, and then release and bring your hands back down to hands to heart. Put your hands uh, all the way down to the ground. Interlace your fingers. Do it the weird way, because you always do it that way. Interlace your hands the other way. And before you lean over, hug your shoulder blades toward the spine. Stretch your arms a little bit. Maybe bring your, your uh, fists down. Feel the spaciousness. And then slowly bend forward and reach your arms overhead. Feeling the front of your shoulders open up. Bobble your head and relax. Breathing well. And release your arms, settle them down. Inhale, rise up again. Arms coming in whatever vector of movement feels good. Let's cactus open the arms, spread your wings, and then exhale and round your uh, arms and chest, palms together. Release your hands down. Take your arms straight out to the sides, spread your, your palms, drop your shoulders. Let's do a couple of rounds of just some circling of our arms. Make sure your fingers are pointing straight up toward the sky. So you start to invite some nerve stretching. Breathing well. And then pause there. Fingertips pointing up, spread your palms. Lift one ear. And then lift the other ear. Release your hands down. Give them a shake. Grab onto your right wrist with your left hand. A little bit of a pull on that wrist and lift your right ear up away from your shoulder. So try not to pull so far down that you get offline with your shoulders. And just feel into that stretch in your, your neck and then decide, do you want to draw your chin down or your chin up a little bit? Feel into that mobility. We'll change sides, grab onto that left wrist, a little bit of a uh, anchoring, and then reach your left ear up away from your shoulder. Feel free to move your head, you can lift your chin and drop your chin a little bit to so just get into those scaly muscles on the side of your neck. And then relax, shake out your hands again. Eagle arms, drop right arm over left arm. Okay. Drop the shoulders, lift your elbows, find your breath. Imagine you have weights down on your shoulders, widen your collarbones. From here, we're going to lean forward a little bit, come toward the ground, bend your knees, let your arms hang just a little bit. And then come back up. Open up your arms to the sky, change sides, left elbow on top, shoulders down, elbows up. Okay, 
collarbones wide. Heavy weights on the shoulders. Feel your neck and shoulders relax. And then we're going to slowly lower ourselves down to the ground, toward the ground. Bend your knees. Let your arms kind of hang. And then we're going to stay down there. Loosen your arms. Turn them into monkey arms. And then grab onto your elbows and let them hang. Let your ribs move away from your hips. Relax your neck. Inhale for a halfway lift. Get your spine spacious. Exhale and melt back down. Step your right foot forward, left foot back. Come to a lunge. Light, lightness on the blocks. So you try not to bear all your weight down. And let's go ahead and begin to bend and straighten the front knee. Moving with your breath. You can choose to do this with your back knee on the ground. You can choose to do this with your knee off the ground. Now, when we come up to crescent lunge, Choose a vector of movement, you know, that you feel might feel good. Okay. And then lift your arms up. And if you're done with lifting your arms up for now, you can put them down. We're all going to put them down in a moment. And release your hands down at your sides. Bring your palms in front of you, palms up, hands in front of you. And let's open up the arms out to the sides. Imagine a little bit of a heavy weight in your hands. Try not to push your floating ribs forward, knit in. Soften the back knee, bend it a little bit as if you're trying to come down toward the ground. Open the chest. All right, and then from that place, whoa, step your back foot forward. Okay. Find your breath, change sides. Left foot is in front, right foot is now behind. Okay. Hands on blocks, feel your breath. Let's start to open and close that front knee so we straighten it and we bend it and we're moving with our breath. Come into a lunge, come on up, press and lunge. This time we're going to stay down at your sides for a moment. Feel your heart lift. Feel your shoulder blades drop down the back. Palms coming out in front of you. And let's open up to the sides again. Okay, so breathe into those muscles of your shoulder blades. You know, your rotator cuff is active. The infraspinatus and the teres are working here. Those are two muscles of your shoulder blades. Round your legs. And then release your hands, come to dog pose. Stretch back, lengthen, feel your legs open, come forward into a plank. All right, so same like when we did in dog pose, ground the four corners of your hands, hug your hands toward each other, feel your chest and your ribs turn on. Okay, put your knees down if you need to, find the ground. Roll the shoulders a few times here. When you're ready, inhale, cobra pose. Exhale, and come back down. Take your arms down at your sides, palms facing the ground. Lift the heads of the arm bones, everything comes up. Find your breath, legs and arms, chest, everything's off the ground, neck is long. Relax and melt. Pick up your feet and windshield wipe through your knees. You can turn your head one side. Okay, we're going to repeat that back then. So palms are down on the ground. Heads and the arm bones start to lift. Our hands are down at our sides. Okay. Softly bend your elbows. Try not to hyperextend. When you lift up, see if you can feel those shoulder blades on the back. Engage your core to support, feel the muscles along your spine, lift the heads of the arm bones up toward the sky and away from your shoulders. 
melt and relax to come back down. Up onto your hands and your knees, move your spine about. Okay, we're gonna come up to stand. If you'd like to go through dog pose, go through dog pose. Take your legs wide, okay? And come down to a wide squat. Elbows inside your knees, turn your feet out so they're in line with your knees. Breathing well here, finding your breath. And stand on up. And we're gonna bring our feet closer together. Now, we're gonna come into a squat and this is just to kind of prepare us for the next thing we're doing. So when you come, come deep and let your, let your body come down as far as it wants to go. You can sit on, if you wanna sit on a block, you can sit on a block. Elbows inside your knees and just start to open up your hips. Find your breath. The more upright you become, can you feel the shoulder blades drop down your back, the muscles along your spine working? And relax to come out of there. Okay, so um, feel free to twist your spine a little bit while you're here. This next one is very hard for me to do, so I'll do my best to demonstrate it, but it's, I don't always succeed. Okay, so we're gonna take our legs wide on our mat, so we're not squatting anymore, we're down on our buttocks. And your hands, let me get a little closer to you so you can see this, your hands, are gonna go like this on the front of your hips. So we're not holding our hips like this. Uh, the back of our hand is on our side waist or hips. Legs are wide, okay? And you're gonna take your elbows on the inside of your knees. Okay, so this is, this is very difficult for me to do. I don't know how you're all feeling in your shoulders, but I don't internally rotate very well. So if that's the case for you, you can just keep widening your legs. If you're okay, start to hug your knees into your elbows toward the midline. Keep lifting your chest. Try not to, you know, co totally um, come into a slouch while you're doing this. Okay. Breathing well. Shoulder blades down, chest lifted. And then we're gonna slowly come out of that. Let your arms rest, bring them down at your sides. Sit cross-legged for a moment. You can get up on the edge of a blanket if you need to. Simple twist. Lift one arm up. Again, choose the vector of movement. Maybe you don't lift your arm up. Maybe you just go right to the outside of the knee. Twisting to the side, open your chest. and come back to center, second side. You can lift your arm up or maybe you're skipping, lifting your arm up a little bit because your shoulders are tired from what we've done and that's okay. Twisting and breathing, drop the shoulders down, turn your head. Relax to come back down. All right, let's come up to the stand. We're gonna do one more thing before a couple standing poses. So um, I don't have a good wall to show you this, but for many of you, you've done this with me in class before um, where we've done the wall clock. So the whole goal here is to, we're gonna start with our right hand. We're gonna take you know one o'clock, then three o'clock, then five o'clock, and then we're gonna to turn toward the wall and do seven, nine, and 11. So we're gonna start with our hand on the wall, your body is going to be, uh, your right shoulder, right hip is facing the wall. So our side is facing the wall and take your hand behind you at one o'clock. Open the pecs. So your pectoralis major muscle, you know the big chest muscle that attaches from your sternum to your shoulder. It has fibers that go in three different directions. So hitting the one o'clock, three o'clock, and five o'clock will stretch all three of those directions. Okay, let's move our hand down to three o'clock. Hand is wide, lift your spine, find your Tadasana. 
Find your breath. And we come down to five o'clock. Breathing deeply. And then we're going to turn to face the wall now with our whole torso and legs. And we're going to cross the arm in front of us down to uh, seven o'clock. Now, I like to hold my wrist and kind of tug on my wrist a little bit, widen the collarbones. And then up to nine o'clock. Widen the collarbones. You can tug a little bit on your wrist if you want to. Drop the shoulder. And then up to 11 o'clock. Okay, so that's the shoulder clock where we're just going around the whole, uh, the whole clock with our shoulder. Now just notice how that right shoulder feels and let's do the left. So our left side is facing the wall. Our hand is, we're gonna go counterclockwise now. So our hand is at 11 o'clock. Spread your palms, open up your pecs, breathe well. And we're gonna come down to nine o'clock on the clock. Lift your crown, open up across your chest. Try not to arch your back. So integrate your core a bit, feel Tadasana leg. How's your breathing? And then come down to seven o'clock. Now we're gonna cross our body. So we're facing the wall with our torso. Our left arm is crossed in front of us. Palm is facing out. You can have a little tug on that wrist if you want. Broaden your collarbones. And then bring your arm up to nine o'clock. A little tug on the wrist. Pull your shoulder back and down, collarbones wide. Breathing well. And then bring your arm up to one o'clock. And relax. And just swing your shoulders around. However you want to swing them, just let them be free. Okay, so grab onto your strap. Strap is wider than your shoulders, and you can go as wide as you want to. We're going to find Tadasana in our legs, and we're going to inhale to lift the strap up over our head and bring it back behind us and then switch. Now, if you have a shoulder issue that you're kind of nursing, you know, I'm, I'm stacking a lot of things on top, just so you can find all these different choices of how to stretch your shoulders. You may find that some don't feel good and that's okay, just find the ones that do, okay? After a couple of passes, we're gonna hang out in a big chest stretch. So you can walk back to your wall and put your hands on the wall as you stretch here, if that helps you stay out of your neck a little bit. Feel your chest open up. So this is a great stretch for your pec minor. Breathing well. All right, now relax. A few shoulder shrugs, a little twisting, whatever feels good. Now, I don't teach this very often at all because I don't find this to be a healthy movement pattern in my shoulder. So I don't do this pose, but I will show you as best as I can because for some people, this feels really good. So we're going to do Parsvokanasana with a bind. I'm going to use a strap because I can't reach my hand. So I'll show you. 
first. Right foot is going to come forward and come as if you're going into Parsville Panasana, and we can be there for a moment. It's a great place to experiment with those different vectors of movement with your arm. And then um, if you're able to, okay, we're going to come and bring yourself into a bun. So that means you lower your torso a little lower. The strap is underneath your legs. You're going to reach back with your hand behind you and grab the strap. So let me turn my body around so you can see the back of me. Okay. So I'm using the strap to hold on to. If you can bind, take your hands and come into the pose with your hands bound. That's a little too much for my shoulder. So start, maybe you already started. You can come into Parsvo Konasana. Okay. Extend that arm, find the freedom, the space. And then if it feels good, start to feel the bind. So the strap is underneath you and you grab onto it and try not to have it create a wedgie. You can you know, have it underneath your right thigh a little bit. Open up that back shoulder or your top shoulder. So it's in a little bit of an internal rotation where you're asking the chest to open at the same time. Press your feet into the ground, lengthen your crown to your foot. And then um, back up. Okay, I'm going to come to the second side. Left side. So we're coming into Parsville Panasana first. Put your elbow on your knee or your hand on the block. Stretch your arm and, and find different vectors. Typically, I think it's a good idea to swing your arm in front of you, but um, because it helps your rib cage not overarch on that one side, but you do you. Find the vector of movement that is best. Shoulder blades down. Press your feet, find your legs, and then let's begin to find the bind. So I always hold my strap. You can hold it either in the front or the back hand, whichever, you just have to find it, okay? So I like to just kind of find it before I go deep into the posture. Let the strap kind of hug against the top of your left hamstring so you're not um, to, you know, getting too bound up with it. Drop the shoulders, extend the spine, Take that top arm, you're in internal rotation. So the back of the hand is against your body, not the front of your hand. And then open up the shoulder, take your shoulder back. Extend through both sides of your, your torso, shoulders away from the ears. Find the groundedness of your legs, root into your feet. Okay, come on up, come out of that pose, turn your feet straight and come down to rest. Thigh bones back and relax your skull. We're gonna heel to our feet until we get to child's pose, take your two blocks and put them in front of you shoulder width apart on the low side. We're gonna put our elbows on those blocks, drop back to child's pose and take your thumbs toward your spine. So opening up your triceps, feeling your shoulders, find a different level of opening. Notice how many different movement patterns we've done today. Your shoulders, you know, are so amazing. They move in so many different ways. Breathing well. All right, and then let's relax. We're going to find two blocks. Soles of the feet are coming together. Lie down on your back for Sukta Baddha Konasana. Lock underneath each leg. We're gonna do a couple of things with our arms. Grab onto your elbows. Maybe your arms can have a moment of stretching overhead or just resting on your forehead. Decide if that feels good. Here's another choice. Cactus your arms on the ground. Another choice, arms straight out to the side, like a T. Another choice, arms overhead. 
And another choice, arms down at your sides. So you don't have to stay in one choice. Find your pose. Eventually come to a place where your arms are just really able to rest. Maybe do a little bit of an opening posture first and then eventually come to a place where your body is very much at rest here. Breathing deeply. Hopefully your shoulders feel a little fatigued, a little tired, a little bit energized, a little bit aware. You know, what are you feeling in your in your shoulders, your shoulder blades, your chest, your arms? We're going to take the arms now, cross your right arm over your left arm and give yourself a hug. So the opposite hand comes to the shoulder. You don't have to strive for this. Just let your shoulders relax here. Breathing deeply. Change the cross of your arms. Now, um, let's do a simple twist. So take your blocks away and uh, move, you know, bend your knees, move your hips over to the right, knees come up, drop left. Enjoy your twist. Breathing well. Let your chest open. Back to center. Lift your hips, scoot them over the other way. Up down and relax. Back to center, knees to chest. Happy baby, whatever feels good. Let your back relax. And we're going to come for Shavasana. I just want to show you one thing. If you have a shoulder or maybe two shoulders that are unhappy, there's a few things you can do in Shavasana. You can have a blanket underneath your shoulder so that you kind of raise up your shoulder. You can do that on both sides. If both of your shoulders are a little achy, one blanket kind of tucked underneath the shoulder a little bit, and this will kind of float your shoulders, which can feel very nice. The other thing you can try doing, if you always feel like the only thing that makes your shoulder feel better is holding your elbows, then you can use a strap and take the um, strap around your arms, and you can bring your hands to your heart but the strap will kind of prevent your elbows from falling too far. So there's a lot of different ways that you can support. Um, if you are gonna try the blanket, hold, hold the blanket like this long ways so that when you kind of float it underneath your shoulder a little bit, you have room for your arm to rest upon it as well. And if, you, your hand, if your arms are really long, you can stick a block at the end of the block, at the end of the blanket for your hand to rest on. Okay, so experiment, if you've never done this before, 
it can be a really nice way of supporting your shoulders. Uh, you can kind of feel like they're floating in a boat a little bit. Uh, and if you don't like it, then by all means, don't do it. Okay. So whatever feels good. You can also, if you have blanks underneath you, bend your elbows and put your hands on your belly or your hands on your chest. Lots of ways to rest the shoulders after what we've just done. Close your eyes and melt your body. Allow yourself to soften and settle here. Breathing deeply. get heavy. Allow your shoulders to get heavy. Deepen your breath. Into your toes and roll around your ankles. Slowly. Find your way to your side. Take your time. Move to sit when you're ready. A moment to offer our gratitude outward. 
and send your care to another. Namaste.